Sorry, this is Bureaucrat and Designer. Um, I'm president and uh, co-founder of Rust Limited. We're based in Los Angeles, California, and here in Bristol, uh, well, here in England, in Bristol. Um, so we've worked in games, virtual reality, and other sort of playful media since 2010-ish. Um, and uh, so we sort of we paid our rent, both doing independent projects, but also doing consulting and client work. And often that bleeds over into other fields here. So um, I was struck by just how much of all of the, the pain and suffering that talked about here, all the pain points, were all stuff that sort of that resonated. It's like, oh yeah, I've dealt with that problem. Um, so uh, rather than sort of go through all the, well, sort of quick background. So a lot of our contract work here um, starts out with a conversation looks something like this. We don't know if this is possible, but here's what we're thinking. And so then we sort of come in and sometimes it's custom hardware, sometimes it's custom software, sometimes it's new markets, that sort of stuff. Um, but really sort of answering novel design questions is, is, our, um, is our sort of challenge. Um, so this has meant work in games, uh, data visualization, we've done training tools, uh, architectural, lots of architectural visualization, um, we're doing a lot of amusement uh, park and attractions work lately, um, tech demos, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's sort of the range of, of fields where we've worked besides just straight games. Um, so independently, so we've done lots of, sort of Projects like this one, this was a tech demo. Uh, uh, the end of the earth has told through uh, museums from the far future. Um, and so we, this is part of a big contest, and about the same time this happened, uh, sort of VR came back into style uh, pretty hard. Um, so since we had a background, like a lot of our mentors were old school VR people, um, uh, and we had done cave work, we had done lots of other stuff. Uh, as this happened, we sort of ported a lot of our projects to VR and have been working in that space sort of since. Um, lately, our focus has been on sort of room scale work. So the HTC Vive is the sort of best example of this one. Um, last April, we launched uh, hot dogs, horses, and hand grenades onto Steam. Um, so it's a, um, a sort of simulation sandbox game. So lots of uh, guns and grenades and Lawn games and, and all sorts of fun stuff there too, um, but that's the interesting thing is it's actually really simulation heavy, um, and we're doing a lot of uh, interesting stuff there, which I can talk more about later. Um, but yeah, so that's just sort of a background of where I'm coming from. So when approached here, like what what were sort of the to talk about what the challenges that we're facing in this case and how they might relate to a lot of the industries that are sort of represented here, um, I sort of had to wrap my brains on it. Like clearly. Uh, building virtual environments is difficult. Like no one's going to argue that point. Um, but what are what are the, the difference between addressing a simple pain point and the, like the big problems that sort of keep you up at night? Um, and so for me, like what the big problems were, uh, sort of came to this. The problem with virtual worlds for VR is not building them. In our case, those are all questions of you throw enough money at it, you throw enough developers at it, you throw enough 3D artists at it, and you can you can do that. And that's an issue of, of budgeting and time. Um, the, the design problems that I'm sort of interested in, I spent a lot of the past year working on, are how do we allow users to move through these spaces? Um, how do you sort of explore them? And it's one thing to sort of have a model, it's another one to sort of be able to do anything cool with it. Um, and then as a result, that, that needs to inform how you build it. So you're going to build different things depending on what you're, um, how you want to explore that data. So a quick run through of like the design challenges there. Um, so the first off is the classic motion sickness as you're, you're, uh, everyone's familiar with. Uh, this has gotten so much better. The new like, room scale tech especially is fantastic. Um, but it's not, it's not perfectly soft. And a lot of like the mobile um, solutions, it's, it's a much bigger factor. So that's something you sort of have to keep in mind as you're appraising any of these solutions. Um, tutorial and learnability. So not everything that we do here is, uh, is interactive. Um, but if it is, then you're asking the user to do something. So then, you, and somebody touched on this before, you need to then train them how to do that. So uh, there's a tension of the more sort of nuanced and uh, powerful uh, navigation technique can be, um, the more you need to teach the user how to do that. And if you've got, I've got a two minute time to demo, like in the arcade industry, uh, or a client one, like this isn't a, this isn't a gamer, this is a, you know, a 90 year old real estate developer who you need to convince on, on this one too, the simpler the better in a lot of those cases. So there's a, a trade off there. Um, on the accessibility front, uh, when you're doing VR work, it involves the user's body in a way, in sort of only ways. And our bodies are not only different shapes, but they operate differently. So um, how does this experience and these tools work 
if your end user is in a wheelchair or uh, colorblind or if they're seven feet tall or if they can't use one of their hands or, or any of these other sort of factors there. So the more you can think about that earlier on, the better. Um, and then suitability is sort of the, um, the most interesting one in my mind. Different experiences have different needs there. And if you're sort of building a, a you know, data visualization platform that you know, you're exploring map data, you're gonna want different ways to navigate that than um, if you're building an action game or you're building a, you know, uh, a ride or something like that. So this is sort of the, a lot of the matrix of challenges that we need to look at. Um, so what are the, the, the sort of set of strategies that we end up uh, using here? So, um, so the first option here is no movement. <coughs> So, and a lot of these virtual experiences, you don't actually, the user doesn't need to move. And so, um, you know, in some of these cases, you're producing these gorgeous maps and these cityscapes and stuff, and you can just, you stand there and you look at it, or you, you move the, the, the stuff around your environment near you. If you can sort of keep everything in the virtual environment within arm's length, give or take, um, you can not need to use any of these other solutions there. And that's, that's great, and that answers a lot of these problems. Um, but you know, but you need to be able to sort of keep everything the user needs inside the sort of space of a closet, let's say. Um, and that's, uh, for some cases it works, and for other ones it doesn't. Um, so vehicle-based movement, so this is, um, uh, basically you take that closet space, and then you fly that closet around the world, and that, um, it sounds silly, they're like, well, wouldn't that be like walking? Actually, no, it's, it's like, it's perceptually a lot different to a user there. Um, and so if you can put the user in a car or a spaceship or a train or something there too that's sort of got walls and whatnot around it. Um, that opens up a bunch of other possibilities that you can uh, you can use there. It's weirdly more comfortable there. Um, there's an unmute button on the. Oh, no, did, I, did I mute myself? Possibly. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so custom hardware. So this is another solution here that I think is um, there's a lot of super cool work we're doing. We're working with a couple of hardware partners, including um, Affinity, who does the. Um, Trembling demo later. Um, so these are really great for uh, certain scenarios and totally useless in other ones. So if you need, if you've got nice, uh, we've done products with, you're in a physical car, you have an ATV thing with a wheel and gas pedals and, and all that stuff. And that's great if you're making something about driving. If you're making something that isn't about driving, the solutions aren't so great there too. So depending on the context and the use, you know, if, you're, if it's a research context, if it's an amusement or attraction, installed, those are all cases where um, those can be fantastic and a lot of fun to work on too. Um, but again, there's expense, there's size, there's uh, a number of factors that sort of weigh against that. So, so what if you don't have that um, and you still need users to move around? So the, the teleportation approach, um, which was not a great solution for a lot of screen-based sort of game and interactive stuff, um, is actually a fantastic approach in VR. So basically, you just um, teleport from, from point A to point B, uh, and it's, it's, we, it keeps the user way more comfortable than you'd expect. You know, we actually orient really well there. Um, yeah, and so, so here we've got uh, all kinds of sort of approaches. All these sort of break down as to how do you choose where your point A and point B are in those cases. So structure is sort of like slideshow, move to the next point. Point of interest is you sort of pick the, there's four important places in the room, and you point that one, you go there. Um, free teleport lets you sort of uh, you point anywhere on the ground, you can move there. Each of these sort of have trade-offs there. Um, Grid-based is another one we've been playing with where you have a regular grid of movement. Uh, so sliding movement, so this is another case that was sort of tried often, um, and this is real sort of danger zone, um, where you sort of, you're moving the player bodily from one place to another. Um, and so this is, uh, can be really useful in certain cases, but um, this is where people get a lot of motion sickness. Uh, and so we try and sort of steer away from these if we can. Um, yeah, there is, it's more common in the gaming world than it is elsewhere. But so, uh, point to move is sort of similar to teleportation. I want to go over there, so you slide yourself over that way. Um, touchpad joystick is like using a sort of Xbox controller or something on those lines. Uh, that's pretty terrible. Don't, don't do that if you can avoid it. Uh, climbing, uh, there's whole games built around this one where you sort of grab things in the environment and pull yourself around on them. Uh, it's fun, if you're doing something that's about climbing, it's fantastic, it's a, it's a fun way thing to do. If you're not doing that, that's, you know, uh, not so much. And then all kinds of what we sort of call arm swinger ones, so that's the, like, it detects if your arms are moving and then it walks you forward because, or you're bouncing in place or that sort of stuff. Those are also silly and ridiculous, but I bring them up because 
the people keep trying those. These are all sort of new spaces, and I'm sure that a lot of the solutions that sort of that, that come up there um, are both use case specific, and um, there's going to be some that we sort of haven't thought of yet. So uh, these are the sort of questions that sort of keep me up at night uh, as I'm working on through through these various projects. You know, which of these are going to work? Um, you know, the name of the game is often putting in a bunch of options, but um, yeah. So that's that's how that's how we spend our time uh, there too. Um, yeah, so if there's uh, any of the stuff you feel like uh, you want to talk about or move in that direction, definitely come find me. Um, we're doing uh, lots of fun VR work uh, too, so that's um, and it's super exciting to hear all of the, the tech and the, um, the, the solutions that you're sort of working towards. Uh, 